take them seven shots to kill my Zerglings. It's not a huge difference, and yet it is. It means, in a big battle, it means that my Zerglings are going to be considerably more powerful. Um, I've actually got a good number here. I could definitely take his forces as is. Uh, at least these guys, but unfortunately the wall means that while I'm sitting here chewing at the wall, they're shooting me o over the wall and killing a lot of people. And my plan is not to use these guys to attack. I just want to use them to defend. In fact, I have enough gold. I'm taking the expansion here. I'm going to have an extra base, so soon, at some point, I'm going to get considerably more income than him. But this is always a little bit dangerous to do because it costs a lot to do this, uh, and you're doing this instead of spending money on more units. Um... And it does take a while to build more workers to saturate these minerals so that you're getting a proper economic bonus. And again, those extra workers means you're not getting any units. So there's a window here of vulnerability. I feel like I've built enough troops that I'll be okay shape if he starts to move out, and hopefully I can see it. I've got one Zergling parked right outside of his base. The idea being I'll see if he starts to move out with his units. Um, and then I will just start building more Zerglings or more other units to help defend against it. It seems like it's, it's a good enough number. And now I've got five Mutalisks. And this is where I want to be. Five is, is kind of a magic number uh, that I was targeting. Um, and it's usually, the, the way the timing works out, my timing is not perfect on this map, but the way the timing works is usually you end up with five Mutalisks uh, very shortly after building your Spire. And I'm going to use these to harass him. Um, I'm not looking for a kill. Actually, in fact, I got six Mutalisks because my timing is off, so it's a lot later, but I do have one extra muta. I'm looking to kill workers. I don't want to engage his army. In fact, right here... Oh, that's a supply depot. When he started building this, for some reason, I thought it was a, um, a turret, an anti-air missile turret. Uh, I just saw it wrong, so I'm going to come over here and kill it for no real reason, but what the hell. Um, so I've killed a few workers, and now I'm going to just back off here. And if I look at the units lost tab, he has lost seven units. I have lost two. One of those uh, was my initial drone that I sent over here. Another one is I haven't had an overlord lord parked right here, just as a scout, so I'd be able to see him coming. Uh, he did send a couple of marines out and just shot that down, so I lost some minerals there. But now I've taken out 450 resources worth of units. So seven units, but the number's not too important. Like, for example, later on, we're going to be fighting with my zerglings. And so my number of units lost is going to skyrocket, but the resources lost are not going to be that much higher because the Zerglings are really cheap. So you can lose a lot of them, and it's okay. It's the money that's, that tends to be much more important. So I've killed a few of his workers. In fact, if I look at the income here, I don't know if this is updated yet because I think he lost a few more harvesters than that. Um, but you can see he's actually not very far behind me, and that's part of the reason I haven't really been doing a great job. I've set up the base, but I haven't done a great job of saturating it. In fact, I've got lots of minerals doing nothing right now in trying to micromanage my uh, micro is a term you'll hear a lot. Micro is micromanaging your units, sort of controlling them uh, a little bit more meticulously. My macro has fallen off. Uh, when the macro is sort of the, the macro level or the econo economic gameplay. So I've got a lot of money sitting around doing nothing, and I don't have that many harvesters, the fact, despite the fact that I've got this base. In fact, I built two gas geysers, but uh, I don't have anyone mining them, so I really should be spending my gold or my minerals to build more drones and, and to bring my economy uh, a lot stronger. Still got my zerglings behind again. I, there's, I'm, this is not a real attack that I'm doing. This is just a harassment. There's no reason to attack the front door, although I suppose what I could have done See, if I were good, and I'm going to try to remember this next time, if I were good, I could have moved these Zerglings, say, over here, okay? And then when I started to attack with my uh, Mutas up here, I could have waited until his forces showed up, and then I could have just attacked his front door with my Zerglings. At neither point am I really looking for a, a kill. I'm not looking for a decisive win, but general harassment and just making his life much harder and hopefully doing a little bit of damage. Hopefully my mutas can kill a few um, workers and then pull off while my zerglings come in and maybe take down a supply depot. You know, it's not very much. It's only 100 mineral. But if I can do that without taking a loss, it's well, well worth it. Now you're going to see a mistake here. So at this point, I've moved my, my mutas off. They are hanging out over here, you know, past the edge of the cliff. They're on a different level. And these guys, they're going to move over here your sea but they won't be able to reach my Mutalisk. So I move, this is what I do. I, I hit, and then I run. And then I wait, hopefully, until he repositions his forces, and then I, I come and hit them again. So at this point, I have probably... And I should be able to check... Uh, let me hit play here. I've moved my guys over here, just moving them away. Okay. 
this, this, I'm now locked to my camera is what I'm doing. You're now seeing my view. I now come back to my base. I realize, oh, I've got all this money. My economy sucks. I'm going to start building. Actually, I start building some zerglings. You see here? A bunch of zerglings. Because I'm worried about a counterattack or something. I don't know. All sorts of bad decisions right here regarding my economy. I should have just built drones. But I think I assumed that he was stronger than he was. A lot of times I do this harass. And then he comes and decides to attack me. He's like, wow, he's got all this mutilism. I'll I don't know, but then he wouldn't be able to defend himself. I should have been smart. I know he's pinned into his base. He can't come after me. I should just build up my economy. I don't. But more importantly than that, and let me switch back to my everyone view, I'm now over here ma managing my base, which is okay. Except I assume my mutas are safe, and they should be. On most maps, I can fly far enough away from the mineral line, and it's not a problem. But on this one, you're going to see something here. It's just close enough. He can't hit me. But he's going to get close, just close enough that my mutas see his units and automatically move to attack. And I am going to lose four mutalisks here before I realize what the hell is happening. And I come back. And luckily, these, yeah, I have now have them selected. I'm like, fuck, I've just lost four mutalisks for absolutely no reason. I'm going to move these off or they're safer. It turns out they were okay there. I wouldn't have been attacked, but I would have had to give them the hold position command. Instead, I just sort of left them idle, uh, which meant that they reacted when they saw enemies. So that was very, very, very poor on my part. I should have moved them here right away. But I wanted to be close to the mineral line so I could attack. Still, his units are still here. Now he's starting to build some uh, missile turrets, so that kind of harassment is going to have a much harder time. And I should have taken the advantage to hit the front door. I'm going to try to remember that next time. So, back over, let's watch my base a little bit here. Uh, let's take a look at the income. This is the income tab. Uh, these are a number of harvesters. He's down to 16 harvester, harvesters from, I think it was 18, maybe 20. Uh, and I've only got 21 because, of course, some of my uh, drones are being turned into buildings. And a lot of it is just that I'm using my larva to build more zerglings. And if I check my unit count, I've got 44 zerglings right now, quite a bit. Finally, I'm going to start building some drones because I think, you know, I looked at my base and I realized, like, look at this. I've got, like, very, very few, all these mineral patches that are not being mined. Very, very poor of me. Uh, my queen's got a lot of energy. She can actually spawn extra larva. So generally speaking, I was losing it on my macro side. So that's too bad. And, oh, one thing that's important here. Notice i got some zerglings down here. And then I've got another batch of them sitting up top. This is actually where my units go when I just build them. Uh, but I think I'm going to forget about that momentarily. Now, I do have another group of mutas here. I've got six once more, and I'm going to come in for another attack. I'm going to come in here, see he's got a missile turret, back off. He's also got Valkyries, which managed to kill one of my mutalisks. Valkyries are anti-air units. When, well, generally speaking, right now they can only hit air units, but they're very good. They've got very, very, they're not Valkyries, sorry, they're Vikings. Valkyries are from an older version of StarCraft. They're Vikings. They have very good anti-air attacks because they've got really, really long range. Their attacks have a range of nine, my attacks have a range of three. So they far, far outrange my mutalisks. Mutalisks have the advantage that their shots actually bounce from one unit to another. And what's their damage? 10 damage versus 10 damage. So we're even damaged um, right now. Um, but they outrange me. But if I'm hitting one guy, the other one is also going to get hit. But the big deciding factor is I've got, well, five now, and he's only got two of them. So I move in here, hope he doesn't have another turret. Yeah, I, I notice there isn't. I say, okay, well, I'm just going to try to kill you. Boom, I get one down. He moves towards the turret, but I don't fall into that trap. He can't outrange me again, so I've got to pull back here. But he follows me in. And am I going to turn around and kill him? I don't know. I guess not. And he doesn't follow me, and I'm pulling way back to my base, I guess. I think I could have stuck around, maybe. But let's see, how are we doing at the base? I'm now up to 33 harvesters, and now you're going to see... Well, right now, this is so this is your income per minute, basically. And mine is going to be substantially ahead of his. His is maintaining pretty close to mine. I've got more than twice as many harvesters as he does, although I'm getting a lot more gas. Um, I think he's got a surplus of gas, actually. He's got a good amount that he's not spending. He can supplement his harvesters with these... Uh, uh, these mules, these mechanical devices that increase his income. But now, yeah, look at this. Now I'm up to 37 harvesters. And at this point, I've got an incredible economic edge. I remember that he's got this supply depot here. And I say, well, you know what? I'm going to take some pot shots at it. I can't see him defending this quickly enough. I'm going to send my mutas just to kill that. And I'm going to attack these rocks. These are actually guarding a back entrance to his base. I don't really, it's not really part of my strategy that like, oh, I must destroy this so I can go after him. Mostly, again, I'm looking to get small advantages. If I can destroy these rocks, then bonus. 
Even if I don't, though, it'll probably pull his units up here so that he starts attacking. You know, he, he's going to decide to attack me. Of course, my muted lists are going to get away just fine. I've got one Zergling there. I don't care if he dies. He's mostly just there to annoy. And I want to keep pulling him out of position. Plus, at some point, if later I do decide I need to go through and through his back door here, then it'll be already a little bit damaged, and it'll be that much easier to do. So I see he moves in with two Marines. I start moving back. I'm like, hey, there's only two Marines. Let's go and kill them. These units here, these are medvacs. They heal biological units like Marines and, and Marauders and stuff. Uh, so if I start fighting here, they're going to turn around and start healing that. And, ooh, now he's got three uh, Vikings. Now, I could probably... I would win this fight because I would probably kill the weakened one, and I still have more than, and than he does. But I don't want to lose my Mutalists. My Mutalists are too valuable to waste like this. Now, back to my base. I figured it was only a matter of time before he started to attack. It felt like, you know... There was, he was going to start moving out. I built three spine crawlers. These are static defenses, more or less. They're not units that you can move, but they will attack as things move into range. I've got lots of Zerglings, and note, I still have a bunch of Zerglings here. These are all the Zerglings I was building. I actually have two pages worth, um, but I f I'm not going to remember that they're here. Now, I do have vision over this area. I know he's moving forward uh, for a few reasons. I mean, I sort of knew it from over here, but these little creep tumors, they, they are hidden. They're burrowed with, beneath the ground, but they do give me vision. So I know he's moving up here, and I notice it's a very marauder-heavy army. So I think, okay, marauders are not very good against zerglings, and not his, his entire army's not here. His medvacs are not here. Why don't I just attack him preemptively, even though I would be much stronger here with my spine crawlers, but I expect... And let's see, yeah, he was moving to right to the spot. He was going to move here and park, wait for the rest of his units to come, and then move in. So right now I'm going to attack only half his army. Plus, the way he's arranged right now will make it very easy for my units to get surrounds on individual members of his army and kill them very, very quickly. So I'm going to run in with my speedlings. You see how quickly they run in, very quickly start to get a surround and do a lot of damage. And I can see there's a lot of marauders here. Marauders don't hit air. I start to move in my, uh, my uh, hydralisks, or my mutalisks. But he does have enough Marines to fight them back. And they're going to go down. And if only I had remembered all these Zerglings. So he's coming into my base. I'm trying to do the best I can. He is taking out all my Spine Crawlers. They're buying me time while I build more and more and more Zerglings. Got me a Muta in here doing a little bit of damage. But of course, things are getting healed up pretty good. And now all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh god, I'm in big trouble. Oh, oh, but I have all these Zerglings. Oh, okay, then I'm going to be fine. So I throw them in here. They're going to do some good damage, but these Hellions have a flamethrower attack that are just roasting my Zerglings, especially since they're all in the line. But I got another batch of Zerglings have just popped out. I'm going to select them, run them in there, because they don't have many left. Target the Hellion first, because they're so bad on Zerglings. Finish these guys off. No problem. And again, look at the income difference. 40 Harvesters for me, 15 for him. I'm getting tons and tons and tons more money. And I have two bases two bases, which I, okay, I'm starting to run low on minerals here, but I got all these minerals here just fine. These eventually run out, and if we look at his base, this is the only base he ever had. Many of his mineral patches are almost bare, um, and he is eventually going to run out of money. Really, I don't have to do anything. I could just sit back and win the game, because he would eventually starve to death, but I've just won a big battle. I've got some troops left. He probably doesn't have that many. I say, well, why not run them in? So I run in my Zerglings, they attack the front door, and then I realize, oh shoot, this, this supply depot is down, I should just run through it at some point, maybe? Oh, it's actually when these guys attack that the Zerglings are automatically running. I don't think I'm micromanaging the units right now, I'm just paying attention to my base. My Zerglings are going to take a good chunk out of them, and what do I have in my base? Well, I had all that money, lots of larvae, I build a whole big batch of Mulesks, and this is going to be the killing blow. There is nothing he can do right now to defend against this many Mulesk, be especially because their their attack bounces and hits three people at once. A group of Mutalisks is so powerful. They scale up so well. So I'm going to come in here, and he doesn't even have any anti-air units. I target his medevacs, uh, because if he did have a bunch of marines, or was building a bunch of marines, I don't want the medevacs healing them up. He brings in the, the Vikings, which are good anti-air, but I have so many more numbers than, uh, than he does. I take out four of them, only lose one, and then he leaves the game. So, I hope you enjoyed this game, and hopefully this sort of tutorial level uh, is going, gameplay is going to be interesting to some people. Again, if there's, there's a lot of great other StarCraft commentators, and it's such, such a good game. Um, and there's so much, I don't know, strategy and tactics involved. There's a really, you know, getting to know StarCraft 2 will, I think, really enrich in your life. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.